guys. I am coming on here today to kind of share with you guys my love and hate relationship with the Harlequin pattern. I won't stay on long. I won't keep you long. I just uh, was out here doing this and thought to myself, if people could see me struggling like this, they would laugh. And then I thought I should probably let them see me struggling like this. So uh, actually, let me pull out, um, let me pull out a stencil and show you what I'm not going to be using. This is what I'm not going to be using. Uh, okay, so Dixie Belle has a Harlequin stencil, which I love. Um, this is the whole one. I'm not going to be using this one, but this is a whole one right here. Um, and then I've also cut one up because I like to use it on different surfaces like drawer fronts. So this is one that I had to cut to do a drawer front because I wanted to get it in the inset just, just right. This one was probably for like the side of a dresser. Um, I'm not sure what that one was for. Anyway, I would love to use this today, but I am working on a Bombay chest, which presents several problems in one. First of all, this is too small for the look that my client is going for. So I cannot use this size stencil. Now you can order different size stencils from different companies. I've always made my own, or I make a pattern actually, um, not a stencil. I just make a perfect diamond and then I trace it out. Uh, like if I were doing just the top right here, I would trace that diamond out. Anyway, the stencil's too small. So no normally I would just cut out a single Harlequin, one diamond shape in whatever size I want. And that works, for, that works really well. It works if you're doing just a tabletop or a, any flat surface like this, right? That would work really well. I could do that and then just take it to the ends and I could be done. But the problem is I'm doing a Bombay chest and it's very curved. It's got like the pot belly curves. You know, every drawer has a curve on it. And then even the sides, the sides belly out, like they bow out like that. So you can't use a pattern that you've cut out on that without, you know, you have to be able to go around all the curves. So you, my client wants large Harlequins, like large. So I'm doing a six inch tall Harlequin by a five inch wide Harlequin. I made it my first one myself on the top of this piece. So I just want to tell you, when you have something that she wants it all over, the top, the sides, the front, everywhere, Harlequin everywhere. So you don't want to, you don't want it to just be the drawer fronts and then you push them in and it's a, f and the body of it, like around where the, you know, you this don't part. paint these pieces solid and then well you can i could paint this solid and just have three drawer fronts that, that go in that have harlequin on them but then the big harlequin across each drawer is just going to look like a row of harlequin stop a row of harlequin stop a row of harlequin that's not what i want we want it to be like this entire piece is an all-over pattern where the harlequin wraps around the edge goes over the front we want it to all be together so you just have to pick your spot to get started. And I'm choosing to start on the top because it is my flat surface. So that's gonna kind of get it going. And then I'll be able to take my Harlequin pattern on over the front and then on over the sides. So let me tell you what I've done so far. And this is super boring because it involves measuring and I can't stand measuring. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. And I can't find my yardstick, so I'm having to use Matt's big squared off thing, this T-square, a T-square. It's a big one. They make them much smaller. But actually, this worked perfectly. And let me tell you why. I don't think you can see that side, but I think you can see this side of the, the Bombay chest. So what a T-square does, are you familiar with these? You can make your own angle. So this, this right here unscrews. And you can make a 75 degree angle, a 60 degree angle, a 40 degree angle. And right now, obviously, we've got it at a 90 degree angle because that's a square and that's what I want. So this allowed me to put it down on the end. This way you don't have to use a level or measure off, oh, am I, you know, 13 inches down on this side and am I 13 inches down on this side? This squares off the opposite side and allows you to run this across the top and you, you can trace it as a straight, perfect line because you've got a T-square, did y'all know that? So what I did was I measured how long this piece was because I wanna find my center. So I used my T-square, I measured how long the piece was, it's 35 inches, I divided that by two, which is 17.5, so I made a mark right in the middle of my chest, right in the middle of this chest, not my chest, this chest. <laughs> 
So I did that. Then I measured how deep it was. Same thing, T square, lined it up across the back. It was 17 inches long, which was eight, eight and a half inches to the middle. So I did the same thing. I made the mark in the middle. And then I just drew, I traced across this way and that way. That way I have my center mark. Now what am I gonna do with my center mark? That's where I want my first Harlequin to be, but that center mark is not the top of the Harlequin or the bottom of the Harlequin. It's dead center of my first Harlequin. What? So that means that I have to divide it by two and measure halfway down to get to the bottom and halfway up to get the, to the top point of the diamond, right? That's the, my center point's the center of the diamond. So then I measured my Harlequin with, we, you know, when we redid my shop recently, um, it's beautiful and very organized and it's too organized and too new. So I don't even know where my regular old soft yard sticks are. So I pulled out another one of Matt's tools and I measured and this diamond, I chose it. I made it this way. I wanted it to be six inches tall. I just kind of held up my hand and it was like, Based on this size Bombay chest, what, you know, how do I want like giant Harlequins or do I want smaller ones? Have y'all seen my dining room wall? I have a blog about it on tracysfancy.com. If you go to tracysfancy.com and you type in the search bar dining room, my dining room should come up and I have a Harlequin wall and it's huge. Like the Harlequins are half the length of half my body. It's a, it's really pretty. It's really, really pretty. And this is how we did it as well. So, uh, six inches. So I put my ruler the three, which is half of six, and the center dot, and I drew a dot six inches down on that crossbar line that I'd drawn, and then, I mean, three inches down from that and three inches up on that crossbar. So I've got the height of my Harlequin. Then I decided how fat do I want my Harlequin to be? Well, if I divide it in half, if it's six inches tall and I only made it three inches wide, that is a super long and skinny diamond. I didn't want that. I want like a I want a strong diamond. Um, so I decided I tried three inches too tall and skinny. I tried four inches wide. It was still too tall and skinny. So that only leaves me between four and six inches. Well, if I make it six inches wide, I've basically just got a square that I've turned sideways, right? It's just gonna be squares turned on its side. So I decided to go with five inches. So it's just an inch shy of being a square, but it makes it a bold Harlequin. So half of five inches wide is two and a half. So I laid down my ruler at the center mark of my lines that I drew on the top and I measured out two and a half inches to one side, two and a half inches to the other side. So now all I have are dots. I have crossbars drawn and dots at the height and the width of my diamond. So I know my diamond, my first diamond is right there. So now what I need to do is because I decided five inches wide is I need to go along this, this crossbar and measure out five inches by five inches by five inches, all the way across, five, five, five. And what that's gonna do is lay out for me exactly the, the size, you know, the width of each Harlequin. So here's a five with my pencil and then I'll go down to the 10 and that's my 10 and I don't think I can get a fifth one in. Oh, just shy of a fifth one. So I'm gonna do the same thing going this way. I'll put it on the 10, I'll go to the five and then I'll go to the end, which is right here, right? Oh, I didn't do that right. See? Ah! Are y'all feeling bad for me yet? Is anyone feeling bad? All right, so now I'm gonna erase my little marks. And did you know this? If you're erasing furniture, uh, pencil on furniture, it's really good to use the white rubber erasers, the rubbery looking ones and not a colored pink one. It erases better on your furniture and leaves, leaves less marks. Just a little tip. All right, so I'm gonna lay this down and I'm gonna go five inches out from that little thing, my jig. There we go. Five and then down to the 10. There we go. So now I have my marks made. All right, so the same thing I'm gonna do with the height 
of these. I'm gonna go, this was six inches up and it actually is too big. So it's not gonna actually get a full row there. So that's that. So what I can do from here, you guys, is now I want to do the same exact thing with the end point. So the end point, I'm gonna measure five inches out from that. But you wanna use that T-square to do this because you want to make sure that you are straight on the edge. So I'm gonna put that right here line it up with the other side that way i know that my line is straight and i'm going to count out five inches from here so one two three four five and i'll make my little mark and again one two three four five and make my little mark and one more time one two three four five and make my little mark so eventually what I'm gonna do is after I've made all my five inch wide marks, if you turn sideways, you can see a row that's perfectly straight. And I'll lay my, my ruler across that and I'll draw out my lines from, from side to side at an angle, going this way across, and then I'll take it this way and I'll do all my little dots at an angle, just that way going across. You can either draw it out with a pencil or you can just go ahead and tape it off. You don't have to draw the line if you don't want to. You can just, if you're, if you're painting by hand without tape, draw your lines. If you're a taper and you want to tape off your Harlequin, that's how you would tape it off. So from here on out, I'm going to set up my phone and put this in high speed and record the entire thing um, of me doing this so we can make a video about it because I have people ask me about it all the time and it's kind of a lot to absorb. Um, but that's on a flat surface. It gets more difficult on the curved surfaces and I will have to have a... Um, I will need a, what do you call it, like a seamstress tape, like a tape measure that a seamstress uses. I'll need one of those because I'll need it to be able to curve with the curves. So I gotta pick one of those up. You always want to detack your tape. So I put it on my clothes, and pull it off, put it around my leg, pull it off. Freshly painted surfaces, no matter how well you've prepped them, um, they need really 30 days to cure and harden. So just want to be kind to it. You don't want to use tape with a real heavy tack. So I detack it and I am going to tape off in diagonal lines. Um, leaving an entire diamond open in each space. And just press lightly, not to press really hard. So I'm focusing on my center diamond. That's what will keep you aware of what you're doing. So I'm focusing on my center diamond and I want to be able to paint the entire diamond. So I may tape on the outside of that diamond. The next, so this whole row is the outside of the diamond. This next row, I'm gonna put my tape on the inside of the diamond because this tape is already on the inside of the next diamond. So I'm just gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. Tape inside the diamond, just like this. Then on the next row, I'm gonna leave it completely open and I'm gonna take tape on the outside of the diamond. Okay, so I've taped off 
one direction of my Harlequin. And doesn't it look off? It looks off, right? But it's every other row is taped on the outside of the diamond. So if you look at, this is my center diamond, it's wide open and that one's ready to paint. So this row is on the outside of the diamond. This is a skinny row on the inside, outside, inside, same thing, opposite direction. So that's why it looks wide, skinny, wide, skinny, wide, skinny, wide, skinny, wide. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing in the opposite direction, leaving this one right here open. So I'm gonna be on the, I'm gonna tape on the outside and on the outside and then on the inside, inside. <laughs> I'll show you in a minute. So my entire center diamond is exposed. The next diamond, tape's gonna be in the middle of it. But the next two diamonds on the outside will be fully exposed. So I'll show you what that looks like in, in a second. But that's it, I'll let that dry and then I'll come back and do a second coat and then I'll remove my tape. So several hours later, I have finished drawing out the Harlequin on the front of this bowed out and rounded out and curved Bombay chest. So I don't know if you can see it very well. I'm about to go over all my pencil lines with a Sharpie marker so that I don't smear my pencil lines, but um, I'm done. And it was a lot of work. A lot of work. I don't know why I do this to myself, but I do. And um, I ended up using a flexible ruler. Flexible ruler, it's very important. And then I also used a piece of tape that I completely put fuzz and stuff on so it didn't stick. But I used this instead of like a measuring tape um, because I was able to curve this and work it like over the kinks and keep it going out over the bow. Um, like crazy. I don't know why. I just, I just like a challenge. So it's done. And, uh, I still have two sides to do <laughs> to draw. Then I get to start painting and every single Harlequin will have, will be hand painted without tape with an angled brush and get two coats. I will never, ever, ever get my time back. I will never get the co the true cost of what it cost me to do this, but it is so satisfying to me to challenge myself with something like this. So it doesn't matter. I'm going to love it when it's done. Maybe. Okay, so now I'm coming in for coat number two. I've already done the second coat on all of the Harlequin pattern except for this final edge. So what I do is I fill in, I stand on one side of the piece, like right now I'm standing on this side, and I fill in everything, and I make my circle around, then I come back so that I don't have to move my body. I can finish this square and this stroke move to this one, finish this one in this stroke, move up here, finish it in this stroke, that way I'm not like having to turn my brush the whole time. Front and top and drawers are done. Now I'm down to starting this disaster. <laughs> and I don't even have this side. Coat one on the left side. So watch my pinky finger. This is how I do 
Harlequin without tape and I freehand. So I've got my brush, got just a little bit of paint on the end of it. Put my pinky finger in place. Start here and I drag my pinky finger. Balance my pinky finger here because I can't really drag. 